Most of the traffic restrictions introduced under a low-traffic neighbourhood scheme in a London borough will be scrapped because the council thinks they're too divisive. Bosses at Tower Hamlets Council say the LTN, which is a government scheme aimed at reducing traffic in residential areas, has proved controversial among locals. That is despite a survey which shows that most people in the area actually want the LTNs to stay. Very confusing indeed. So joining me now is journalist and writer Nels Abbey. Good to see you, Nels. Thanks for coming in. And Jane Harris. Hello, Jane. Hi. From the group Love Bethnal Green, who support low traffic neighbourhoods. Now, you live, what, 50 yards or something from the LTN? Yes, and my husband, my, my son's school is within the area, so we go through it every day. All right, so re describe life before it and then tell me about life with it. So before it, there were heavy goods vehicles going down a street that has four schools on it and a thousand students walking along it every day. The air quality was much, much worse. We know it was worse in the scheme and on the boundary roads, um, but it was just a much less friendly place. Mm. There's old people now who say that they feel safe walking to the shops for the first time ever and people talk to each other because there's little places to sit down. The police say there is less antisocial behaviour and the local hospitals say it should stay. And, and describe how it's imposed. Is it is it those big planters in the middle of the road? Is it just signs saying you can't turn left or you can't turn right? Or how does it physically impose itself on people? There's a whole mix of things. So there's a cycle lane, which is really important, particularly for delivery cyclists, mm -hmm. who are some of the poorest people in London and who need to be able to work safely in a cost of living crisis. There's also some planters, there's some little parks, there's some chairs to sit down and, and chat to people. I talked to an old man today in his 80s who said he's now worried that he won't be able to sit there and talk to his friends anymore and he's worried he'll be attacked and he won't feel safe going to the shops anymore. It's disgraceful that a London borough is making a man in his 80s feel that he won't be as safe as he could be. So in your view, when I've already said in introducing the subject that, you know, by and large the residents are in favour, why is this happening? Why are they taking them out? I think you would have to ask the Mayor of Tower Hamlets. I'm that. asking you, though. What do you think? I, I, he made a pledge, the one pledge in his manifesto, one out of 96 pledges to take these out. He also made four pledges to, to listen to residents. And it seems that he's taking that one pledge as more important than all the others, which is crazy. We really need him to look at the evidence, understand the police, the local hospital, local residents, and 82% of local businesses want this to stay this way. But also, it's going to cost him two million pounds to reverse that and he could use that for all the other things he wants to do in the borough free school meals help with the cost of living housing we have a terrible housing crisis mm -hmm. it's really disgraceful this decision has been made and and when is it going to be implemented as far as you know we don't know the answer to that right and and how vociferous and emphatic have residents been about how much you don't want to lose the LTN well 3094 people in Tower Hamlets um, signed a petition last year it was the second largest petition ever in Tower Hamlet's history on any topic. They asked him to stop his plan to rip up the roads. They asked him to listen to the neighbourhood. And if we could find specific little tweaks that needed to be made, great. Mm -hmm. And then let's use the money to make those improvements, not just rip the whole thing out. The thing is, it's, he's made it a polarised debate. He's made it rip it out or keep it as entirely as it is. And actually any sensible person can say, well, actually, let's keep the good bits of it and let's tweak things that might could work better. All right, it's been described as divisive. In my experience as a broadcaster, let alone a citizen, LTNs always are divisive. There are always people who say it's paradise on earth, it's nirvana, it's the most wonderful thing I've ever seen in my life, it's transformed, the birds are singing, people are skipping, everyone's happy, and people saying it's absolutely hell. You know, I can't turn left, and if I turn left, there's the hospital, I can drive to it, but I can't, I've got to go all the way round. And people saying, well, I live three roads away, my life has become a living hell, they've got paradise there, we've got hell here. I mean, I've been talking about these on air for so long, I feel as if I've heard everybody and you hear both sides of the story with equal emphasis and everything else. But what's been described in Tower Hamlets is divisive among the community. And what I've heard is, and please correct me if this is not true, it's only anecdotal, but I have heard that it's being billed as a sort of rich versus poor. And that's absolute rubbish. <coughs> Actually, if you look at the scheme, social deprivation within the scheme is, is higher than in, La in London as a whole and higher than in Tower Hamlets, which is already a poor borough. So it's actually protecting the health of children in, in a really, really deprived area. I think it is true that when these things first come in, it's hard to adapt to change. Change is hard for everyone. My husband's disabled. The first time I realised this change had happened, we were in a taxi, because sometimes you have to take a taxi when you're a wheelchair user, and it couldn't go our usual route home. And I was like, what? Where are we going to go? And now, 
people have got used to it. And that's another really frustrating thing, is it's got less divisive over time as people have got used to it. I've talked to car drivers who say, I know my routes now, mm. it's all all right, right? They do not, even people who didn't love it to start with, do not want £2 million of taxpayers' money spent on a scheme that residents like, that businesses like, and the local hospital and police say should stay. Let me bring Nels in here. I mean, this is a lady who really is very passionate, happy with, absolutely. comfortable happy, with, yeah. used to, and in every way, obviously passionately defending the LTN, which has improved quality of life. I mean, how can you argue that it doesn't? Well, I, don't, I can't speak specifically to Tower Hamlets, but I do salute the decision in Tower Hamlets. And I salute the decision because on the basis of the principle of justice and uh, environmental justice, um, social justice, and amongst any other form of justice you could actually think of potentially, I think that what's happened with LTNs or so is a bit of a travesty. What you're seeing here is this, is that I could live in an LTN. Mm. Uh, sorry, one thing I want to make clear, mm. I do agree, I don't think that um, heavy duty vehicles should be going past yeah. your child's school. So I think there should be a school street set up there, which is similar to an LTN, but it means that between a specific number of hours, you can't go by that street. So I agree with you on that. Can I explain this? That but no, but, but okay, you've, you've had, you've had a, good, a, good, a, good, a good slice of the cake. Let me, let me let's share it. So, um, so, but, so what's actually happened as far as London wide concern is this is that you have this situation in which some people as far as there's winners and there's losers of this mm. and the winners and losers are vastly different people who live in the ltns they end up getting gated communities they end up getting lower pollution they end up getting um lower noise pollution everything else and so in, in economic terms these are called um externalities so people cannot impose externalities upon them because of the fact they actually live in the ltn which is a good thing for them. They also get increased housing prices too, if you're if you're if you're in a home there. But people who live on these things we call boundary roads, which are sacrificial roads or so, if you you could actually live in an LTN and drive a gas guzzler, drive a Hummer, for example, and love it to death and drive along a boundary road and actually impose pollution and noise upon them. You can live on a boundary road and drive an electric vehicle and not be able to drive through the local LTN. So there's a lot of absolute literal division. But what makes matters even more worse is the fact that the people who live on these roads that we call boundary roads, just sacrifice, sacrificial roads, essentially, they are more likely to be poorer because the boundary roads are poorer and also, additionally to, more likely to be ethnic minorities. So what we're seeing here, and this is one thing I really ring the alarm about, Norman, I'm sure you and I would be allies on everything or so, is that I don't want the I don't want the LTN situation or any, any form of environmental movement whatsoever to become a situation in which we are embedding a degree of environmental racism mm -hmm. and classism well, and I did, above all, I did, I did ask Jane, is this a rich and poor situation? It is. She said, well, she said no, and she lives in it. So what about everything Nels has said? The richer people in the LTN have got fresh air, they're happy, they're delighted, and the poorer people in the boundary roads, which he describes very in a very epic and tabloid manner as sacrificial roads. We've heard of sacrificial lambs. These are sacrificial roads. First time I've heard that phrase. <laughs> I commend it. I'm going to remember it. I'll probably reuse it many times on this show. <laughs> the sacrificial road dwellers are more likely to be from ethnic minorities. They're likely to be poorer. They're exploited so that you and all the other happy residents of the LTN streets can breathe cleaner air. Is that fair? Is that true? That is not true in this case, and I think it just shows how important it is to look at these things on a case-by-case -case basis. The people who live in this in this area are poorer and more socially deprived than people in the rest of Tower Hamlets and in the rest of London. So we are literally protecting people who have some of the worst health and the worst health inequalities. So I actually think this, these schemes are actually, in this case, supporting justice. And also, the, um, the boundary roads in this case have also seen bigger improvements in air quality than in the rest of Tower Hamlets. So it hasn't been devices. But I think it's like anything else in life, right? You can build a good TV studio, you can build a bad one, you can build a good railway, a bad one. These happen to be really good ones and that's why people want to keep them. Let's bring in David. He's on the line, he's on the phone, he lives in London. Hi David, lovely to hear from you. Good <laughs> afternoon. Hello Vanessa. I just want to say I completely agree with the man who was talking just now. And what else? What to, well, yes, what I want to say from is that is that why is it that some people's lungs are considered more important than others? Well, what if, what if I were to say, and I don't live in Tower Hamlets, it's absolutely nothing to do with me, but what if I were to say, simply listening to Jane, there are four schools on that road. Now, the children who go to those schools won't be from any particular ethnic background. They'll be from all the roads around and further away, and all those children who go to all those four schools, Jane says a thousand of them or so, will be yeah. breathing cleaner air. So will the teachers, so will the parents when they come and pick them up. You can hardly say it's 
discriminating against anyone at all mm. when schools embrace all the children in the borough, that the children who go to those schools should have the chance to breathe better air and less chance of getting run over because it's an LTN. How can that be bad? How can you start to talk about discrimination when we're talking about four schools full of children? Well, the low traffic neighbourhoods are all over London. It's not just those schools that might be benefiting. But the point is that there's huge amounts of people who, who are getting displaced traffic. Yeah, that, they, that, are. That's... they are. Well, Jane says they're not. Not, they not, not in this case. Not to be honest, the only, the, they're not, the only roads that have had more traffic in these areas is the roads where the scheme wasn't completed. But how come they aren't getting more? How come because... the, the, the heavy goods vehicles that used to go down this particular road aren't just going down the road four or five roads away or whatever? Because I think why because not? overall, it's easier to cycle and it's easier to walk. 80% of journeys in Tower Hamlets are done cycling or walking, right? So if you, the more you make these things easy for people, the more they do it. And then the nicer the neighbourhood becomes people talk to each other you know people do gather around these little pocket parks that they've created that did not exist there before it really has brought people together Nels? i should just say the reason the school street wouldn't work is there's a school that has two sites there's a sixth form and the rest of the secondary school and mm -hmm. so there are children all day who switch between those two sites so it wouldn't work just to close it at a certain time david but i thank you nels what that's would you like very to specific. say again so what i said earlier on so you said everything about cycling and walking or so what i said about environmental ableism or so is a real thing here. That, look, not everybody is able to walk or cycle or so. Not everybody is actually going to be comfortable to do so at night, in particular. When it comes to, say, one of the complaints we've also had, as far as LTNs are concerned, is women going home at night or so. The quieter area it has, has its benefits or so, but it also has its downsides that it could actually potentially be a little bit more scarier to go home. But I think above, uh, overarchingly, above, uh, overboard, uh, overarchingly, about as far as far LTL situation is concerned, is that Look, if the situation is going to be that we are going to impose externalities, that we're going to increase pollution in some places in order to get less pollution in other places, so that's fine. Pay those people in the places that you've actually imposed a, a pollution on them. Make sure that they're, they're subject to compensation. Remove them from well, council pay, tax. Pay them for congestion in their lungs. Pay them to be well, asthmatic. Are, pay we, them for what? Exactly. And also, Jane, can, Jane, who lives there, keeps saying and reiterating that there is not a, dec a decrease in the quality of air that they're breathing. Yeah. In fact, there hasn't been a palpable increase in traffic. I'm going to take her testimony because she lives there, so she knows about this particular one. Your points may apply more generally to other LTNs. Exactly. And certainly, there are people who are thoroughly fed up with them all over the place as well.